This week's pundit is our feminist Deborah Russell, who's on the line now from her home in Palmerston North. Welcome back tonight, Deborah. Thank you, Brian. It's good to be here. It's good to have you on because I like this topic. Pink, That's fun, isn't it? <laughs> given I'm colour blind to red and green. Oh. Yes. Oh. Uh, but I'll tell you. I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, I was. I decided once to to paint my my bedroom in a mm. flat I was living in, mm. and I thought I'd chosen a really nice, subtle off-white and? colour. And my girlfriend at the time took one look after I'd finished this work. I was very proud of it. She said, Brian, you painted your room strawberry ice cream. Lovely. <laughs> well, I thought it looked fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Colour perceptions can be very interesting. Pink for girls, blue for boys. Indeed. It's, yeah. yeah it's, it's pretty entrenched in our culture at the moment. What got you thinking about this? Um, actually, I was on a, a flight home to New Zealand, and um, to my delight, the, the uh, air crew came down the aisle with a pile of Dominion Post. So I grabbed one because it was nice to read a newspaper from home, and I opened it up, and there was an ad for Mother's Day from Mitre 10. They had a whole lot of stuff that they were offering for Mother's Day, suggestions of things you could get for your mother, um, a ladies' garden tool set in pink, and a ladies' tool set, you know, with a screwdriver and a hammer and things like that, in pink, and a ladies' tool kit, again, a hammer and a screwdriver and some secateurs, all in pink, and uh, a wheelbarrow, again, in pink. So it seems that if you wanted to buy something for your mother for Mother's Day, it ought to be pink. And it just made, it gave me the screaming heebie-jeebies. I can just imagine that some of the folk marketing this thought, we're being really progressive here. We're showing that might attends for women as well. Indeed, but there must be lots of ways to make uh, hardware accessible for women without having to make it all pink. Um, it was astonishing that this, uh, they thought that this was the way to do it, just by making it pink, and that would be enough to get women through the, the door of the store or to, to get uh, 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 children or, or adult children or, or husbands or partners or whatever to buy pink tools for someone. You know, one of the strange things about this is I'm sure I've read that it wasn't that long ago Hmm. that pink was the masculine colour and blue was the feminine colour. Uh, that's right. Uh, it, it does seem that the settling down of pink being very much for, for girls and, and blue for boys is perhaps something from the 1980s. But the evidence we've got goes back to, well, um, about 1918. There's an absolutely wonderful quote coming out of a, a, um, a magazine that was written at the time um, it, saying that the generally accepted rule is pink for the boys and blue for the girls. The reason is that pink, being a more decided and stronger colour, is more suitable for the boy, while blue, which is more delicate and dainty, is prettier for the girl. So now that's from 1918. Um, but then in about the 19 in 1927, there's um, uh, Time magazine did some uh, research or not some research. There was a, a chart. They had a chart showing which colours were appropriate for boys and which colours were appropriate for girls, according to stores at the time. And at that stage, all the big stores in the US were telling parents to dress their boys in pink. So pink was very much a masculine colour. And it doesn't seem to have started to um, change until about the 1940s. And it was at that stage that perhaps we get started to see more um, of blue for boys and pink for girls. I just wonder how this mind flip happened. Um, it's, it's hard to know. It, it just seemed to change. Um, fashions change and colours do change. I think what's really interesting is there seems to have been a, a period when we went for gender-neutral clothing for boys and girls. Um, and after all, little babies are fairly gender-neutral, aren't they? Um, well, I'm sure that there'll be many people listening who will remember mm. seeing pictures of their grandparents, or maybe great-grandparents now, I'm talking about in the early days of photography, so these might be photographs from mm. even the late 19th century or early 20th century, and they're looking at their... And then I remember, I'm sure I saw a picture of Grandpa, who was a big strapping bloke when he grew up, and he's, he's in these... It looks like he's in a nighty. Yes, the, the you know. little boys in beautiful dresses. Yeah. And they did seem to be dressed in these gorgeous dresses, and maybe until they were about six or seven years of age, um, in... Uh, you know, as I said, in beautiful dresses and with shoulder-length hair and so on. So um, little boys and little girls, uh, perhaps uh, perhaps in wealthier families, um, which they might have been if they were affording photographs, um, were nevertheless dressed in very, very similar and really what we would call pretty clothes. Um, and it changed. 
Um, I mean, I don't know whether there was some change in consumer demand that drove what companies did. I mean, yeah. A, after the 40s, you've got much more mass production, particularly in the States, and actually companies had more access to colour, too, because dyes become cheaper. That's right. So suddenly you can make things different colours quite easily. Um, but the odd thing is that it really does seem to be even more recent than that, that that, um, that, that pink and blue became so codified for girls and boys. And a researcher in the States, a woman called Jo Paraletti, has traced it to about the mid-1980s. Um, and she feels as though this is when we started to get this entrenched um, colour binary. And she thinks it may be linked to prenatal testing, that parents at that stage could ta start to tell whether or not they were going to have a boy or a girl. And, of course, then they would rush out and buy something that they thought was appropriate for that baby who was on the way. So perhaps that was when that, um, that the colours started to become entrenched. Just one thing, and this is off the top of my head, Deborah. Mm. In the 80s, or actually, we'd have to go back to the 70s, pink became a colour of the gay liberation movement. Ah. And I wonder whether, to some extent, there might have been a reaction against that from some heterosexual people thinking, well, I can't put my boy in pink because, because that's the gay colour. And that because the gay community was looking for a positive colour to say we're out and proud. That's right, that's right. And I guess that might have been um, part of it as well. Of course, that pink badge was the badge which um, the Nazis required... Uh, yes, that's right. Wear, so that might have been part of it, might have been a... Yeah, well, that's why the gay community color. chose that right. colour, yes, again. Yeah. Because they were saying, well, yeah, well... Stuff you Nazis. Yeah. We're, yeah, and good on them for that. We're going to be proud of this colour. And yes, I wonder if parents felt that they couldn't dress their little boys in pink. And of course, that in itself is a worrying sort of thing, that we would be so worried about our child's sexual orientation. But um, I guess it's easy for us to say from the perspective of, of 2013 when uh, society's mores have actually moved on quite what, a bit. Why do you care, Deborah? Why did they, those articles, those ads from this particular hardware company aimed at people like you, almost saying, hey, it's all right for you to buy hardware too, yes, yes. even if you are a woman. <laughs> Why did they annoy you so much? Why the colour thing? Why is it so irritating? Irritating is the word for it. I think partly it, it trivialises women. It says that women are all soft and pretty and fluffy. Um, so instead of just having some decent tools for women... Um, and indeed, I don't understand why tools for women are really any different than tools for men anyway. They put them in pink and make them sort of almost trivialise them. So to me, it, it trivialises women. And of course, if you trivialise women, that means that um, then people who are into soft and fluffy and pretty things couldn't possibly be political well, leaders so, or run big businesses. That's the interesting thing, though, Deborah. Mm. The interesting thing, to some extent, is that you have been caught up in this. Most of us have been. Mm. In other words, pink is not inherently fluffy or trivial because we have it on good authority from somebody who wrote about this back in the early part of the 20th century that it's a strong colour. It's strong and suitable for boys. That's right. That's right. Except we, we do have this current association of it being very, very soft and delicate and gentle. Um, and, and to me, it really does have those overriding tones these days. Now, that's an interesting question you, you've put there, though. Is that because... It, it can't be that it's inherently that way. Is it because it is now so much associated with women that it, we've become to perceive it that way? Because the marketing job for it's pink so has been so successful. <laughs> All you have to do is walk into uh, the Barbie aisle at a toy store or walk into the little girl's section in a, in a clothes shop and, well, as one of my friends described, she says it looks like a flamingo's been in there vomiting all over the place. It's just pink, 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 pink. Um, uh, you know, so it's a very successful marketing job. And, of course, you know, that's the other, one of the other things that I find worrying about it is that it removes choice. It's very hard to buy clothes for... Well, it's not very hard, but it's hard to buy clothes for little girls that aren't pink. Um, and similarly, that closes down choice for little boys, too. I think in an overtone of what you were talking about a moment or two ago about the association with gay people, if you dress a boy in pink, he's perceived as being feminine. Of course, that's a bad thing to be if you're a boy. So if you've got a boy who likes pink, he hasn't got a hope of finding clothes in that colour. I mean, it's also this whole parental concern, maybe, mm. about, well, what I dress my children up in, the colours I dress them up in, is going to have an impact on them. 
Um, I'm just not sure that's true, but that's what we seem to be th thinking in the way we consume. That's right. I, I'm not sure that it has much of an impact on small children either, certainly not the colour itself, except for the reaction that those children then get from other people. Um, so that boys will be derided for wearing pink clothes or for wearing, being interested in pretty things. Whereas if, if that's what a little boy is interested in, of course he should be allowed to be. He should be given that scope in his life. Any sign in your experience of women, mothers of girls, getting sick of pink? It's hard to see in some ways because there is just so much pink around in terms of what's available to buy in the stores. And you would think that if there was a market demand for other colours that it might be met by having lots of other colours available too. Um, but we do see some pushback, I think, with people literally just dressing kids in any clothes whatsoever or any colour clothes. So that, that changes things around a little bit. Um, we do get some pushback, well, some fabulous stuff. I, I saw a, a, a year or so ago, and at that stage, um, Bic Pens brought out some pens called Bic For Her Pens. So they're just ordinary ballpoint pens, but what they'd done is they had put together a set of pens in lovely soft colours, all the soft pastel colours, sort of um, soft pinks and purples and, um, and blues, and they were kind of all sparkly, and they called them Bic For Her Pens. Uh, and these pens were available on the Amazon.com website as well as elsewhere on the world, and there was a whole series of fabulous reviews on there. So people got on there with their Amazon log logins, and they reviewed these pens the way you might review a book. And some of those were very funny indeed. Um, so people got very sarcastic about what they thought about these pens. you got your favourite reaction, haven't you? I have. I'd like you to share it with and I'll share mine with you. Okay, well, my favourite one was a woman who wrote and had said, I want to make sure other girls don't fall for the misleading marketing like I did. If you use this pen, you still need to have a man check your work. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I like this one from uh, David Clayton. Uh -huh. I bought this pen in error, evidently, to write my reports for each day's tree felling activities in my job as a lumberjack. It is no good. It slips between my calloused, gnarly fingers like a gossamer thread, gently descending to earth between two giant redwood trunks. <laughs> <laughs> good on you, Davy. Yeah. I, I think people did have a lovely, lovely time pushing back on those um, those pens and saying, come on, you know, this is just ridiculous thinking that you could design a pen. I've got an email from Frank here. Mm. Now, Frank writes, Brian, I can assure you that it was very embarrassing for a boy to wear pink in the 1950s. By the 1980s, it was much more relaxed. I have a nephew who looked great in pink. You young fellows don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, thank you, Frank. <laughs> It might have, I don't know if he's been into a Barbie shop in the last couple of years. Maybe he has been. Mm. I don't know. I, I have a vague memory of there being pink business shirts around in the 1980s, um, which might be part of it. Well, I that. think that in the 80s there was a bit of pink around. Yeah, yeah. There was. Yeah. I, I do remember the pink and purple. Yes. I mean, I'm very dangerous ground here, yes. making any because of my colour blindness. Right. So okay. I'm just wondering about that. Yeah, yeah. But of course, uh, uh, this researcher in the States, Joe Paoletti, uh, really traces the beginning of the real entrenching of the pink and blue. She says that begins really in the mid 1980s. So I think that our stories could actually be consistent there. Do you buy pink stuff for your daughters, or have you ever? Ah, I was thinking about this, that this evening. One of my daughters likes pink, so if that's what she wants to uh, wear, I'm very happy to get it for her. The others reject it. Uh, when they were babies, I bought some things that were pink, but I also bought blues and greens and yellows and whatever I liked, really. What do they tend to prefer themselves in terms of colour, um, given they are now probably old enough to make their own choices? Oh, very much so. Uh, uh, they choose a bit of pink. They choose uh, whatever colours they like, really. Um, partly because uh, we, we do have a bit of an anti-pink thing going on in our household, so they, they perhaps don't choose that as often as they might. Well, they might get the wrath of mum. <laughs> well, I do, uh, I, I do say to them, if that's what they really want to wear, they should go ahead and choose it for themselves. Joy writes, in our hour, 
I think she means in our home, mm. the pink tools are less attractive to the males. We bought my mother some, and now my father doesn't nick them anymore. Right. He goes and gets his own from his man cave. <laughs> of course, that works very well as setting something aside for yourself. I have a set of screwdrivers carefully stashed in one of the kitchen drawers where I can get to them easily, and no one is allowed to remove them. Um, and that's worked just as well. Look, I, I really like having brightly coloured tools, uh, particularly garden tools, because it means that I can find them, and that's very useful. Uh, but just this perpetual pinkness of something that's meant for women is um, irritating as much as anything else. Deborah, thanks so much for joining us again. Oh, well, thank you for your time, Brian. Deborah Russell, back with more Feminist Thought in a couple of months.